Hello again and welcome to our second video tutorial, The Art of Dry Sifting Static Tech. If you haven't watched our video on the basic process of dry sifting, then you can check that out first or give it a watch straight after this one. You can also find a few written articles on our website's blog at www.skunksifters.com forward slash blog. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram at skunksifters. And if you're on Facebook, find us with at ssifters. Shout out once again to the Fox Farm off shooting this video for us, twice in fact. But be sure to give him a follow on IG too. Before we go any further, we must mention that this is for educational purposes only and should only be carried out in legal states and countries with the correct legal requirements and licensing. We are not liable for anything you choose to do with this information and we recommend that you check your local cannabis laws before attempting. So what are we doing? Simply put, we're separating trichomes from contaminants by utilising static electricity. And with this technique, we'll be removing those contaminants to leave us with 90 to 99.9% .9 purity. So, what is static electricity? And don't worry, I'll be as quick and basic as I can. Static electricity is the buildup of electric charge, positive or negative, in one location or surface, also known as electricity at rest, as static means there's no movement. An electric charge can either be positive or negative, known as protons and electrons respectively. Two surfaces with the same charges repel, whereas opposites are attracted to each other. Typically, most things are considered neutral or have an overall charge of zero until the transfer of electrons takes place from one object to the other. This transfer via friction is known as the triboelectric effect. This effect tends to occur when both objects are electrically insulated, meaning electrons cannot freely flow until they're rubbed together and then separated. The surface of one object will gain a positive charge, while the surface of the other object will gain a negative charge now that the electrons have been transferred. Here's a large 45 micron screen showing a negative charge. Because this charge cannot freely move, the surface can remain charged for a long time unless it's exposed to an electrically conducting material, such as a metal. Now, here's a metal frame screen for illustration. If a conductor, in this instance the frame surrounding the mesh, touches the charged surface, which it does, the electrons will be able to move freely and the charge from the surface will be removed. This is why our oak frames are far more practical and efficient for static tech as the mesh will remain charged for longer than any metal frame screens, producing better results. Don't forget that liquids will kill the charge so cleaning your screens with ISO will make it neutral again. This means the mesh will carry an equal number of protons and electrons, so all we need to do is transfer those to another object to charge it back up. We'll show you how to do that shortly, but first, how can static electricity help us? When swipes across the dry sift on the screen, the triboelectric effect takes place, giving the roller more electrons while the trichomes are now, conveniently for us, the opposite charge. With the trichomes and roller now having opposite charges, they will naturally want to attract and collect on the roller trichomes will be attracted to the back edge of the roller from the direction of your swipe. This is only possible because the oil contained within the trichome gland can gain a strong charge in relation to the material of the tool, which is the paint roller or DVD case. Research the triboelectric series for more info. Contaminants, which is the green plant matter, trichome stalks and everything else, don't hold a charge as they're neutral, so they aren't collected with the trichomes. This makes it possible to separate them from each other. Now, common misconceptions. And yes, we've heard each and every one of these, believe it or not. Having sterile equipment in a closed environment isn't what's meant by clean sift or contaminant-free sift. Obviously we want to be as hygienic as possible, but green plant matter, trichome stalks, fibres and other unwanted things are what we consider to be contaminants, not airborne contaminants. Cleaning doesn't shrink your trichomes. We're not trying to push or force the trichomes through the screen, we actually want to pick them up. Only certain head sizes can be cleaned or bigger heads can't be as clean. That's wrong. Larger heads can be cleaned just the same. You can even clean a pile of full spectrum sift all at once. Right, to begin with, we need our Skunk Sifters 75 micron or 45 micron screen. Both are great for static tech paint roller 
parchment paper, preferably unbleached, fold back clips, anti-static brush provided with our set, sifting card and of course our starting material. Make sure your screen is sitting on a glass or granite surface or failing that parchment paper can be used just as well. Here's a couple close-ups of our starter material. In order to demonstrate the power of static tech, this is second run 149 to 164 micron mixed trim sift that could do with a good clean. If we started with any first run material, then it'd already be far too clean to begin with, so we wouldn't notice the difference. By using dirty material that was sifted quite heavy-handedly for the purpose of this video, you'll really be able to see how efficient this method is by the time we're done. We'll also show you before and afters of some third run 165 micron sift, which is probably as contaminated as you can imagine right now. Just to show that if you already have a way of producing Keef, then our screens can be used to turn it into a far higher quality product. So then, before you start, it's important to clean your screen and all equipment for the best results. Use cold water and a damp soft sponge for the frame, making sure not to soak it and dry immediately. Food grade alcohol or ISO should be used on the screen with a lint free cloth. Once you've done that, make sure your screen is completely dry as the smaller meshes take a bit longer to dry. As I mentioned earlier, cleaning the screen will kill any charge it holds, so all we need to do to give its charge back is rub the screen with a dry lint-free cloth, or you can rub the screen with a flat palm when wearing powder-free gloves. Do this until you hear it start to crackle, or when the hairs on your arm are attracted to the screen. Without doing this, the process can become extremely difficult, time-consuming, and not nearly as effective. You'll actually do well to achieve even 80% purity without charging the screen first. And in a second, you'll see exactly what a charged screen can do. Now, notice the clumps of sift moving without being touched. It wasn't expected, but I guess it's a clear indication the screen is charged up and ready to get going. Anyway, once you've finished playing with your sift, spread it out fairly evenly but not too thin, being careful not to scrape with the card, just gently break it up and move it into a sort of line, almost the length of the roller but don't spread it too wide, otherwise it will collect inside of the roll of the parchment at either end and we don't want that. You'll be sweeping in a backhand direction, so if you're right handed, dump your material towards the left of the screen, if you're a lefty, the opposite. Wrap your roller in parchment and clip the ends together with two or three fold back clips ensuring the paper is tight and not creased. Any creases can scoop up the unclean material and that's not what we want. Cut a few of these at the same size to fit the roller and set them aside. I'll explain why a little bit later on. Grab your roller and with only the weight of your hand, swipe across the sift in a swift, smooth arched motion, almost pivoting entirely from your elbow whilst locking your wrist, making sure not to twist or change the natural direction. Some people sweep in a completely straight line, but we personally feel the natural arch shape to be a more comfortable and a smoother motion. Try which one works best for you and stick to that as we're all different. You only need to swipe two or three times before taking a look at what we've collected on the roller. We'll show a close up and freeze it in a second so you can have a look as well. You can clearly see here we have two lines of material, here are the contaminants and here's the line of pristine glandular trichome glands. These will be collected on the back edge or following edge to your swipe, but don't worry if you only have one line, as we mentioned earlier, contaminants don't hold a charge so aren't necessarily always collected on the front edge of the roller. Carefully use your brush to sweep the contaminants off the roller into the corner or edge of the screen, then brush the line of trichomes onto a large square of parchment sat next to your screen. Careful not to flick, bend or crease the parchment as we don't want any of those precious heads being flung into the abyss. Always brush the contaminants off first to avoid the risk of them falling or being brushed into your clean pile of trichomes, ruining the whole pile. Remember, the contaminant pile can always be mixed back in with the main pile, so any trikes left behind or accidentally brushed into this pile can always be statically removed again and separated. But if you ruin your pile of clean heads, then you'll be back at square one and have to start over. Here's a few close-up shots of what you should expect to see on the roller. On the left is a nice thick line of clean resin separated from the contaminants to the right. When you look down the line at the same angle as shown, the resin is that clean it will look white in colour. 
We personally prefer to use a paint roller as the rounded edge has a larger surface area than the edge of the DVD case, allowing it to collect far more each time. But without recharging the screen up just like we did in the beginning, this thick line is extremely hard to achieve. Once you've repeated this process a few times, you may notice the roller picking up less trichomes and the line getting thinner. Remember, even though we're using parchment paper with non-stick properties, it's still being used to repeatedly rub on greasy, oily material, causing it to become slightly less efficient. All you have to do is rotate the roll slightly, so when you swipe, you'll be making contact with a fresh, new edge of parchment paper. And if you remember, earlier we mentioned cutting multiple pieces of parchment to fit the roller, as once you've rotated the roller enough times to the point it's no longer working so well, you can quickly reload with a fresh new piece or, to get the most out of it, flip it and use the other side. You should be using a fresh, unused paint roller anyway, so there's no harm. Either way, each time you replace it, you'll be back to picking up huge lines again. And for what a roll of parchment costs, this is a great way to speed things up and keep it extremely efficient. Many people don't think to do this and wonder why it takes them so long, but with a few quick changes, you can really get through it with speed. You don't have to every time, but every so often use your card to scoop the material back to the starting point of your swipe in order to keep collecting thicker lines. If you've only got a brush, then simply sweep the pile along. Now here we go. Here's a little look at what's been collected so far. The immediate visual difference in colour between the two is literally day and night. And now that's going back to the side again, but don't worry, we will show plenty of macros of that once we're done. A little tip worth mentioning, even though you're only using the weight of your hand on the roller, be sure to maintain an even distribution of that weight. By that, I mean don't hold more pressure on, say, the top of the roller, as that will only collect trichomes at the top half. By keeping the pressure even from top to bottom, the roller is able to collect the trichomes along the whole edge, which is far more efficient. With that being said, as the pile on the screen gets smaller, you'll eventually be using less of the roller. Even then you should still distribute the pressure evenly, trying not to force more pressure on only the half where the majority of the pile is. One thing I did forget to mention that I have actually seen people use for this too, is the type of parchment paper that's textured or has dimples all over it. Avoid this at all costs, it's useless for static tech. Each and every dimple will act as little craters that will simply scoop up and collect the material inside, contaminants included. So you want a paper that's completely smooth. We've seen many people use a metal card, such as our aluminium sifting card, to do a sort of first stage cleaning, whereby scooping or moving the dry sift around the screen, the trichomes are generally collected on one side of the card and only the stalks are collected on the other side. This isn't as effective as the paint roller method, but still utilises static electricity to quickly remove a large majority of contaminants before going on to use a paint roller. 
We like to encourage people to try different methods as you never know what works best for you until you give it a go to discover the results for yourself. There's no better teacher than yourself by getting hands on and testing a few things and you never know, you might even discover the next groundbreaking technique. Around 50, 55 degree Fahrenheit and below is the ideal temperature to work in, but if you're struggling to keep the temp down during the summer months, then try working on the screens either early in the morning or late at night during the coldest hours. If you're not sure, dump a very small pile of your unclean dry sift or key from the screen, then use the anti-static brush to gently sweep it around a small area of the screen. If you're able to move the pile around without it clumping together or sticking to the screen, then you'll be good to go. When we talk about clean hash, whether it's dry sift or bubble hash, we must also remember that the purity alone doesn't equate to a full melt product. Many things can affect the melt of the resin, no matter how clean it may be. From the cultivar chosen, the grower's skill in growing and the environment during its growth, to the harvest time, drying conditions and the quality of the material used for dry sifting. All of these things will determine the quality of the melt alongside the purity of the end product. This is why, whether you grow your own or source your material, you should always, always do your best in using the highest quality possible. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this process is only necessary for your second run material and above, if you're not too heavy handed in the first run of course. Obviously to obtain full melt in your first run, you only want to work the material for a matter of seconds, which will yield only the ripest of heads. But that will only be around 10-15% to of all the trichomes present in your starting material, and if you're anything like us, you'll agree that's not nearly enough. So you don't want to just throw the other 85% away, do you? No, that's why multiple runs are necessary and why this method of cleaning is so important a crucial method of the dry sifting process to get the absolute most out of your material while still being able to achieve unbeatable purity. Another method of cleaning that uses static electricity that you may have heard of is hand tech, or glove tech is another term. This is where you spread your fingers out wide and with a flat hand wearing powder free gloves, gently rub the dry sift on the screen in circular motions until it starts to collect around the perimeter of your hand and fingers. Personally, we believe this to be another first stage cleaning technique that will still require the paint roller afterwards, but plenty of people seem to be getting great results so we may do a video on that sometime too. Like I said, be open to try new methods to see what suits you. Considering it took the fox farmer a bit longer than it usually would to clean his pile with having to stop and show the roller, check the camera, show the clean pile of sift every so often etc etc, it only took him around 30 minutes to complete. Obviously we've chopped and edited the video to speed it up a bit, but it just shows that this method really doesn't have to be too time consuming with the tips we've shared in this video. And it may seem a bit confusing, but the bigger the pile of sift to clean, without getting ridiculous of course, the quicker it can become, as the roller can pick up more heads with each swipe when there's more present so you'll be collecting far more on your roller every time than if only a small pile was on the screen.
Once you've finished, sweep up the remaining contaminants pile up and either dispose of it or you can put it towards your next batch of edibles. Whatever you decide to do, here's a load of final close-ups and macros of our clean pile of static sift. And on this evidence, it's clear to see why it's such a great technique used by many who aim for the highest quality. Just look how many contaminants have been removed in these before and afters. And as promised, we said we'd show before and afters of some filthy third run 165 micron Keith, so here they are. It's not a pretty sight, is it? Full of stalks, tiny fragments of broken up plant matter and the odd bit of fibre here and there, I'm sure of it. But nonetheless, we're here to show you exactly why I refer to it as the power of static tech and how it can turn something that was only viable for edibles or the bin into an 80 to 85% pure product that's more than worth the short time it took to clean. I mean, yeah, it still has some stalks, but for how filthy it was to begin with, we think it's pretty amazing. You could either do a second stage cleaning to get it close to 95% plus and purity if you wanted to, or you now have a far better product for pressing or squishing into rosin. It just proves that larger heads can still be cleaned to a high standard. Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching gang. If you enjoyed this video then don't forget to subscribe. Also hit the like button below and give us a shout in the comments. If you have any other tips for the community, then you're welcome to drop them in too. Again, for written articles about dry sifting, head to www.skunksifters.com forward slash blog. For our screens of dank, go to www.skunksifters.com forward slash shop. And if you're already a member of the gang, then join our website's forum to get more tips from other sifters or to just show off your results. And finally, a huge shout out to the Fox Farm off for shooting this video for us. Happy sifting!